Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Let us reflect on our need for conversion in order to recognize the Lord, the risen Lord. You know, very often we talk about seeing the Lord, the Lord coming to our lives. But you know, in real life, we need what we call the ongoing process of conversion or renewal of self for us to fully see, hear, and follow the risen Lord. The first reading presents to us a discourse, a speech given by Saint Peter. And we know that this speech has one goal, in order to lead people to see who Jesus truly was. He gives us some sort of a narrative of the life of Christ. How this Christ, how this Jesus did a lot of good. How this person Jesus did the work of God, especially through healing and the uh, casting out of the demon that have possessed the demons that have possessed the sick. Now, Saint Peter boldly proclaims that all of these is God's work in Jesus Christ. But many people did not see God at work in Jesus Christ. They put him to death. But God raised him back to life. This man of God was not abandoned by God. Now, aside from this narrative, Peter was helping the people see who Jesus truly is. And in the end of the first reading, Peter gives us one valuable lesson. What can help us be converted to experience this change of mind and heart so that we can see who Jesus truly is? What did Peter do? Aside from narrating as though the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus, Peter appeals to Scripture. Peter quotes from David. And using the lines of Psalms from David about how God will not allow his servant to experience decay and corruption brought about by death. By going back to the words of David about the trust of this servant in God who will vindicate him, who will restore not only his good name, but his life. Then Peter is telling people, look at how the event of Jesus and sacred scriptures are related to one another. They shed light on each other. The event is a fulfillment of the scripture he's telling us. And the event will help us understand what the prophets of old had already proclaimed. At the same time, those prophecies can help us understand the event of Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Peter is proposing to his hearers a way of having this change of mind and heart so that they can see who Jesus truly is through the help of scriptures. Let us not waste the word of God. When we do not understand many things about Jesus, when we even rebel against some of his teachings, when we are sometimes scandalized at the uh, 
events of this world and even the comportment and behavior of fellow disciples. And we start entertaining doubts about Jesus. And then our vision of Jesus gets blurred. That's the time when we can turn to scriptures. Let the Word of God shed its light on our experiences. And let our experiences lead us to an understanding of scriptures. Then that light will make us see the face of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday is taken from the first letter of Peter. We have been reflecting on our need for conversion in order to recognize the risen Lord. In the first reading, Peter, in his address to the Jews, said that, of course, you know what Jesus did in your midst. You put him to death. You did not recognize him as someone sent by God, but God raised him back to life. How did Peter guide his hearers towards conversion so that they would recognize Jesus as the Messiah? He used scriptures. He used a text with which the Israelites were familiar, one of the Psalms from David. And so with the help of scriptures, hopefully people would understand the event of Christ. And the event of Christ will help them see how Scripture has been fulfilled. So, a pure, a pure heart that is open to the Word of God is a heart that could be converted in order to see Jesus. In the second reading, Peter again proposes something. He tells his readers in this uh, first letter, that they had been ransomed from their old life, not with any object or any event. They were ransomed at the cost of the blood of Christ. That is how precious we are. We were ransomed not by any small amount <laughs> that someone had to pay. No, it took the life of Jesus in order to take us out of slavery to sin. And Peter tells them, his hearers, his readers, thanks to Jesus and thanks to his new life in the resurrection, you have been brought to God. You have become believers in God. As though telling the people, without Jesus' resurrection, you would have no God. You would not have any relationship with God. And also, thanks to your relationship with God, you now have hope, faith and hope. Because of your faith in God, now you have a future that you can look forward to, not a nebulous, dark, no, uh, open-ended future. With your faith in God, now you know your future is in God also. The glory that God will share with you. A beautiful vision, thanks to Jesus' resurrection. Now, we might accept that as a beautiful teaching, but will we believe in it? Will we see Jesus truly as the bringer of life, faith, and hope to us? How could we be converted so that we can see this more clearly? If in the first reading, scriptures are proposed for our conversion, here in the second reading, Peter is quite blunt. Change your lives. Don't go back to your futile, your useless way of life. The old life that had led you away from God and made your life without hope. 
Now, don't go back to that. Conduct yourselves now in a way befitting the gift that you have received. So here, something very practical. Look into your lives. And if your life is one of darkness, you will not see Jesus. You will not see his gift. But if you conduct your life according to the faith and the hope that Jesus has given you, then that light will make you see Jesus and appreciate him more. So here, it is not just the Word of God, but the quality of our lives that will help us see Jesus. So this never-ending process of making my life, making my life tree, truly deserving of the gift we have received, this change in behavior, attitude, decisions, this change will lead us to a brighter vision of our faith and the hope that Jesus has won for us. Our Gospel passage for this third Sunday of Easter is taken from St. Luke, the story of the coming of Jesus, the risen one, to two disciples on their way to Emmaus. We have been reflecting on our need for conversion, a change of mind and heart, in order to recognize the Lord. We know that these two disciples at first did not recognize Jesus. And they had to be led by Jesus himself to a process of conversion, a process of seeing with the eyes of faith. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter reminds his hearers about the life of Christ and how the Israelites failed to see Jesus as the messenger of God as the Messiah. Peter now is helping the Israelites to see Jesus, the true Jesus. He is leading them to conversion and he uses an important, important element of our faith life, the Word of God. Peter attempts to shed the light coming from the Word of God on the events of the life of Christ. Hopefully, through the light of Scripture, they will discover the true face of God in Jesus. That is also valid for us, the light of the Word of God. In the second reading from the first letter of Peter, we are told that conversion in order to be true to the faith that Jesus offers to us and the hope of glory that his resurrection offers to us, we need to conduct ourselves, our lives, in a manner that is befitting the grace that we have received. So, St. Peter is urging us to do away with the futile or useless way of life that makes us blind to Jesus, makes us blind to the gift we have received. So it's, it is not just listening to the Word of God, it is implementing in our lives, in our lifestyle, in our behaviors, in our relationships, in our decisions. Now, implementing the faith that we have received. By this change in our day-to-day -day living, hopefully we will see Jesus more clearly. In the Gospel, we have the narrative of, in a way, conversion that led the two disciples to see and recognize the Lord. We know that these two disciples, already disciples, had pinned their hopes on Jesus. They were quite frustrated because what they had been longing for in Jesus 
were somehow dashed by his suffering and death. They could not reconcile no, the claim that Jesus was the Messiah with his death. I think they still believed that Jesus was a man sent by God. But with his arrest, with his suffering, his death and burial, they could not anymore reconcile that this man sent by God could be the Messiah. In their minds, a Messiah would not have to undergo suffering and humiliation. A Messiah would not be defeated, for a Messiah would be sent by God to bring freedom, triumph, victory to Israel. Their minds were quite colored by their expectation of a political, worldly, earthly liberator. That was what they had expected. And the events turned out quite differently. Even if Jesus had already foretold this, their minds were not yet opened. So they could not see the Messiahship of Jesus. To make matters worse, the story of the empty tomb was not interpreted by them as a, at least a possible resurrection. For them, it just added to the mystery, you know, the darkness. What's this man? What? Who is this man, Jesus? No, he cannot be the Messiah. Even in death, look, his body was uh, missing or probably stolen. In this darkness that made them blind to the reality, Jesus begins a process of conversion. First, Jesus approaches them. Jesus comes near them. Jesus, in a way, runs after them and becomes a companion on the journey. Though not recognized, his presence was real. He talked with them. He engaged them in a dialogue and was patient in listening to their complaints in their desperation. This is the beginning of the conversion story. It is not our effort. It is grace. Jesus comes to us even when we do not recognize him at first. Thanks to the patience of Jesus, who always journeys with us. Secondly, Jesus explains to them the portions of scriptures related to him. He, in a way, reminded them the way Peter did in the first reading, reminded them of the word of God that could shed light on the event of Jesus. And he chose those aspects of scriptures that showed that the Messiah would really have to suffer. So it seemed that the disciples were quite selective in what they remembered of scriptures. They failed to recall those parts of scriptures that really pointed to the Messiah, but were not in keeping with their human-made ideas. It needed Jesus to explain to them about himself as contained in scriptures. And later on, the disciples, these two disciples would say, their hearts were burning within them. Their hearts were already being touched by the word explained to them by Jesus. And thirdly, he allowed the two to express their desire. Stay with us. And he stayed with them for a meal. And when he took bread, said the blessing, and broke the bread, their eyes were opened. The breaking of bread, the trademark, as it were, of Jesus. 
a sign of his total love, his self-giving unto death. And they recognized him. But at that point of recognition, he was taken out of their sight. They don't need to see him anymore because they had recognized him. They had seen him as someone who journeyed with them, as someone who explained the scriptures to them and who assures them, I am with you all the time in my love and in my selflessness. I am in communion with you. I will be here as someone loving you, giving myself totally to you. And their eyes were opened. They knew it was the Lord. And they reported to the other disciples their experience. They had become missionaries as well. This is a simple story, but this is a story of all of us. We cannot claim that we always see the Lord and we always recognize Him. We need, over and over again, to be led by Jesus Himself. Let us be attentive to His presence in our lives. Let us listen to how He interprets scriptures to us. And let us recognize His love, especially at the breaking of bread. You know, I want to share uh, uh, a personal story to you. Uh, you know, as priests, we always, uh, we, we, we celebrate the Eucharist many times, especially on Sundays. And while that is a gift, a grace, you know, it can also make us, in a way, functionaries. You go through the ritual, and uh, because of routine and because of tiredness, sometimes we don't see the Lord anymore. It is just like, you know, engaging on, in, uh, in, an, uh, in an activity that you know fully well. But sometimes we have to admit, seeing the Lord does not come easy. I remember the closing ceremony of the year for priests. I was still the bishop of the Diocese of Emus at that time. And so it was one of those usual days after a whole year of reflecting on the priesthood and challenging ourselves, you know, which was standard fare, we came to the closing uh, ce celebration, a holy hour and then a procession with the Blessed Sacrament leading up to the Eucharist. Everything was normal. I was not touched at all. <laughs> While I led the celebration, everything was coming from my stock knowledge. But then, at a moment that I did not expect, least expect, at the consecration, when I took hold of the chalice and started uttering the words, this is my blood of the new covenant. I don't know what happened to me. It seemed that it's not my voice that I could hear. It was the voice of the Lord. He was present. And I just cried and cried. I could not finish the words of consecration. And the priest celebrating also started crying. We recognize the Lord. He journeyed with us. He's with us. And in the Eucharist, He made His voice heard again. And we could not wait for the end of the Mass to tell the world, He is truly risen. We have seen Him. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.